I actually have eight years worth of resin projects here. And it, it took me a while to not only lay them all out, but to find them all. So why do I have eight years worth of resin projects laid out like this? Well, first, I think you're gonna find going back over them super interesting. The main reason is, is that there's something super important about resin projects that no one's been telling you. And you need to know. This is a block of epoxy resin I poured yesterday, and it is crystal clear. There are some marks on it, only because I used a piece of wood to make this mold. Here is a casting I did in 2019. All resin yellows over time. This is polyester resin that I poured in that same time. These two samples have been in a box under a cabinet for the last two years. They haven't been exposed to sunlight, and you can tell the difference. All resin yellows over time. That's our dirty secret. That's what no one's telling you. Polyester resin does change color. It is not doing it near as quickly. As we go through my projects, uh, you'll see the difference. Let's start at 2021, this year. These are my most recent projects. Ramen handle, these are the Heather Gems, is the shredded CDs. They should and do look pristine. And so for the most part, everything here looks pretty much the way it did in the video. That's good, let's move on. Moving on to 2020. And you'll notice the clarity of pieces in 2020. This was the redo of the uh, bubble wrap coaster. Very clear pieces. This was cast in Alumalite. This was a test piece I did in 2020 uh, for the iron sphere that I cast in Alumalite. Um, and a test piece I did with glass to see how that looks. A thinner coat like this where we're basically just filling a tiny little channel like we did on this rainbow rock bowl. It, it's going to yellow s much slower than something like this where we're filling up a large a larger volume. And here's our glass. Uh, the glass not only has epoxy holding all of the individual pieces together, but the entire inside and outside are also coated with resin. It definitely will go to an amber color over time. Here's an interesting object. I made the object in 2020, but I cast the toilet paper two years earlier. And this doesn't have any epoxy in it. This is stabilizing resin. Even stabilizing resin will yellow over time. It is just the nature of resin. Since they were all pigments, they all look pretty much like they did. Um, theoretically, they won't have any change over time. They will stay this color. Uh, because uh, for whatever reason, uh, when you add a pigment to resin, it doesn't change colors the same way. Pigment, which is this object here, is cast with black pigment. Uh, you won't ever notice that this yellows. All right, 2020, we will leave you behind and move back in time. 2019 was one of my more productive years where it came to casting resin. This was technically turned in 2020, but it was cast in 2019, and that's the date that matters. Uh, something like 40 or 50 ounces worth of resin. And if you remember the video, you'll remember that it was crystal clear when it was turned. This is yellowing quite a bit. That is just what happens. Same thing with the original rose. It is also getting an amber hue to it. It is still beautiful. I think it is still a very interesting object, still a very pretty object. Uh, the rose is still super visible, but you can definitely see some yellowing effects of the resin. In contrast, look at this. This was made with epoxy resin, not polyester resin, in 2019, cast in huge volumes, and it is still crystal clear. I, I don't know why this hasn't changed, but it is one of my favorite objects, and so I'm actually really happy about that. It still looks amazingly clear. Um, here we go. This is also epoxy resin. You saw me use this this year, but it was actually made in 2019, and you can tell that it has got a slight yellow hue to it. There is zero yellowing effect to this object, but this resin is stupid. Thin. It's like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch thick. The thinner the resin, the less quickly it will turn that amber color. This is another good way to sort of hide the effect of yellowing. So this was clear resin cast in macerated cork, and it might be turning amber, 
in different places, but there's no spot that you can see completely through this object, and so there's no way to really see it. It still looks clear just because of the color, and even if it does turn amber over time, you probably won't notice it just because the color of the material in question. Look at this. Here's another fun one. Look at the difference just between the outside edge here and the cut edge. It is beginning to turn a little amber, but look at the difference of this outside edge where the resin was quite a bit thicker than would have been on the inside. This is the uh, part of Adam Savage's book that this was the first one I made that I ended up having to scrap and start over. Very thin coating, still saying, still staying super clear. This one was mixed with different pigments so you don't see a yellowing effect. And here's another one of my favorite objects. This was the wand that I made. For whatever reason, when you add that pigment to the resin, either it doesn't turn amber or the ambering isn't as obvious. I'm not sure which. This is that same uh, cork process, only with a, a pigment added to the resin. And this is um, one of the dye tryings where we also add pigments. So none of these appear to be yellowing. Onward to 2018. Most of these are projects that have colors added. Uh, these were dyed and stabilized. Uh, this was colorant added to um, cotton balls and it has been used well, left out in the sun. This was color added to uh, a pigment that I cast into a shape of my foot. I uh, got a lot of people super upset about that. Uh, this is polyester resin with color added to it. Um, this is also that. But I do have a couple of projects that I, this is also uh, color added to a urethane based resin. So none of those are changing colors, but I did have a couple of projects that year that I did clear. Popular one of those, which was the Fruit Loop Bowl. Here we go, here's a really clear spot. And that still looks really clear to me. Um, if you were to go back and check out this video, these sections here would be completely clear. And now you can see they are slightly amber. Still looks pretty clear to me, but there is a slight yellowing beginning to happen to this. This is my clock. And because of the fact that you've got this black base pigment and then the clear resin, I think it's gonna be a while longer before you can actually begin to see any effects. But let me show it to you from the edge. It's just beginning to turn amber. It still looks crystal clear from the face. Another possible way of hiding that effect. This is an interesting thing that you've probably never seen on camera before and you're wondering why I have it. William Osmond messaged me after he made his Vin Diesel out of ham statue and wanted to know if we could encase it. And so I grabbed some lunch meat that was in the refrigerator and cast it in a mold. It did fully set up. It created a lot of heat in the process and almost instantaneously became this sort of ambery color. Yes, you can cast lunch meat in resin if you wanted to. I don't think I cast any clear objects in 2017. All of these that I found had pigment of one sort or another. This was the year that Pocket83 and I released the Ham and Cane collaboration. He turned this amazing bone base and I turned these little, what we were, um, what we called jeweled mosquito toppers. Uh, since it obviously was cast with an amber color, this should look like this for all eternity. This was also the year that I did this bowl. This was done with polyester resin. Here's a um, Jean Micarta. I uh, don't see any yellowing effect on that. This is urethane resin where I first discovered the lava effect when I could overheat it with water-based dyes. Um, and you can definitely see some change in the coloration on here. So polyester resin, polyester resin, uh, and then these are all epoxy resin. Uh, no, that's polyester resin. Polyester resin, polyester resin, epoxy resin. For me, this is the most interesting year. Really sums up the whole point of what I'm talking about. So you've got these coasters that I made with epoxy resin. A and look at them. They are almost completely yellow now. And again, these aren't sitting out in the sun. They've been in a drawer, in a box. It's just a natural progression. 
All right, I turned on my fan and I grabbed a white sheet of paper. So the fan is so that you don't hear my neighbors scratching around like a mole in front of my house. So this is the one that was turned in 2020. And this was the one that was made in 2016. If that doesn't show you exactly what happens to resin over time, I don't know if I can make it any clearer. But then if you look at something like these secret wood rings, that it was just a slight pigment was added to the resin. And this was West Systems epoxy. This is one of the last projects that I used West Systems on. And you can see there's just no amber effect to that. I was still very heavily using polyester resin at this time. Now if you look closely, you can see it is slightly changing color. Almost a green more than a yellow, but it is dramatically clearer. As you can see, all four of these objects that were cast in polyester resin are much clearer than the object that was cast in epoxy resin. Polyester resin definitely stays clearer longer. So this is, a, this is the oldest piece of polyester resin that I have in my shop. It's the first time I ever used polyester resin was to try to make a magnifying glass. And as you can see, in relation to this knife, uh, the credit card, and the very first dip it I ever did, which was my bacon-handled vegetable peeler, um, this is much clearer. But you can probably see some of the yellow around the edges. So while epoxy resin appear to yellow faster, polyester resin also does turn amber. It just takes longer. All resin yellows over time. 2014 was the first year I started using resin in the shop. This is the oldest object I have made with resin. It is definitely beginning to yellow. This was made with West Systems Epoxy, uh, which is not a casting resin. I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. Here's another early object from 2014, and you can see how much that has ambered over time. That is just going to happen. This is probably one of my favorite objects um, that has yellowed over time. This was made with cotton balls and resin and the ambering effect actually gives it a worn marble sort of look. So that actually worked for this. Here is the very first book micarta I ever made. It's a tablet stand that I made back in 2014. This, this color here is probably as far as it'll go. In another 10 years it may or may not be darker. My gut says that this is probably as dark as it's going to go. Here's a tippy top that I made in 2014. Um, confetti and resin. Kind of a fun little project. Definitely turning more amber over time. And then this, uh, which actually, if it is turning amber, it's really hard to tell. 300 and some odd cents um, with a very thin coat of super glaze over the top of it. When I made this video, I said I was gonna leave one spot intentionally blank and uh, people thought that's what this was. I was just joking. It's not, it's just, it's just a very dirty coin. But that video wasn't filmed in high def so no one could see it at the time. Looking back on these have been pretty fun, even if I was revealing the resin maker's dirty little secret. All resin yellows over time. I hope this was enjoyable for you, and more than anything, I hope that if you didn't know this, that it is something to consider before encasing your family heirloom or your most prized possession in resin. I feel like you probably would like to know that. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.